Hello and welcome to episode 41 of History with James. Before we get into the podcast and the material that we're going to talk about today, I'd just like to talk about a little bit of the some of the things positive going on in the podcast. We have about 90 subscribers to the podcast. Again, thank you for all the listen. We have about over 4,000 downloads, um, slowly climbing to again 5,000. We also have a YouTube channel, which I will provide the link for the YouTube channel in your, um, um, in the, the, I believe it's it's the details section of the podcast, the description, it should be in there and you should be able to go to the channel. It has additional content that is only um, available through the YouTube channel. It includes uh, nationalism, um, Scottish Enlightenment, influence on America, these are sort of expansions on other things, ideals. Uh, MacArthur's Farewell, just sort of an interesting topic and these types of things. Things that everybody would probably like to hear who's also listening to this. Um, the YouTube channel is monetized, so it's a good way to directly support the podcast and the expenses that go towards the podcast. Okay? So anyway, we're, today we're going to talk about Good, the movie, starring Viggo Mortensen and <clears throat> I want to say it's Jason Isaacs. Let me just make sure I got this right. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, I should type in good. I think I believe it came out. Um, yeah, Jason Isaacs and um, um, Viggo Mortensen are pretty much the main stars of the movie. Um, it came out in. Let's see. Came out in I believe 2008 or 2007. I want to say. Let's just. IMDB it real quick. <clears throat> Not Viggo Mortensen because you know that could take hours to figure out the movie. Oh, 2008. So 2008 movie. Um, I think it's an important movie for the cultural and social dynamics going on, transitioning from Weimar to Nazi Germany. Now, just a quick overview of what happens in Germany between World War II and World War One. Um, the Kaiser is overthrown by what's called the Weimar government, sort of these left center, left of center thinkers. Um, <clears throat> uh, overthrow the government because of the war, you know, the, the negative impacts it has. They don't want to go to war anymore. Um, so the society is pretty much given up on war. Um, and then it sort of starts like this, um, you know, experiment of a, sort of a modern European democracy. Um, there's hard economic times, the right, um, including people just a little bit center right, um, they tend to blame the Weimar government for ending the war and placing these burdensome uh, reparations on Germany. And eventually they get some strength and everything. The far, 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 far right, the Nazis, actually didn't have very much support. They manipulated and uh, sort of took control through back channels, I'd say. Okay, so the themes of the movie Good were in many ways the themes of Nazi Germany. Um, let's talk about the euthanasia program. Now, euthanasia, um, did we define it here? I'm, I'm not sure we did. Uh, euthanasia is sort of like a mercy, you know, like for people who are suffering or... These type of things, end of life care. Now, it's a debatable issue, but um, it's not as controversial as some of the things that the Nazis began. Now, what I'll do here is we're going to have two phases of the podcast. There'll be me discussing the historical connotations behind the movie, and then we'll go into a step by step version of the movie now here. Um, the euthanasia program in, in Nazi Germany was the first instance of mass murder inside the country. As we will note later, it was a stepping stone to the Holocaust. In an economic disadvantaged country, the program brought up the, uh, brought up the cost of life unworthy of life. Sort of this humanitarian thing, which is it's really not um, really living to you know, have this affliction or whatever these types of things are. According to the United States Holocaust Memorial Muse um, Museum, these included, quote, those individuals who they believed, beca uh, because of severe um, psychiatric, uh, neurological, or physical disabilities, 
represented at, at once a genetic and a financial burden upon German society and the state. So there's your explanation. This was not something that we see debated in states like Oregon, Washington, and like what we call assisted suicide or these types of things, right? These are sort of the, um, in this country, they're, they're very controversial. Um, but like I said, they're not nearly as controversial or, um, they're not nearly as far flung as these type of ideals that are happening here. Okay, so they represented a, at once a genetic and a financial burden upon German society and the state. Disabled children. In 1939, Philip uh, Bullier, director of Hitler's private chancellery, and Karl Brand Brandet, Hitler's attending physician, began organizing a secret operation, operation to kill disabled children. On, October, on August 18, 1939, the Reich minister required reporting of disabled children under three by all medical officials. In October, public health officials recommended that parents admit disabled children to special facilities inside Germany and Austria. The uh, facilities were, in fact, uh, lethal death facilities killing children. Medical staffs killed children with lethal overdoses of drugs or starvation. Um, starting on a limited scale of um, only children three years old, old and younger. The program um, expanded to teenagers up to 17 years old. And this also worked into what's called the T4 program. The T4 is, um, it was codenamed based on the address of the headquarters of the building. Planners wanted to move the program to adult disabled as well. Um, on, our, on September of 1939, the planners gained authorization. Fuhrer Chancellery Director Phil, uh, Philip Bouyer and Carl Brandet again were in the leadership. They um, distributed medical um, questionnaires across the country to health officials and gave the impression it was for statistical data. Explaining the reviews of medical surveys, the United States Holocaust Museum um, stated, quote, Secretly recruited medical experts, physicians, many of them significant, uh, many of them significant reputation, worked in terms, in teams, um, worked in teams to evaluate the forms. So again, we want to note here these were people of significant reputation. So Nazi Germany sucks in people of all um, persuasions and all professions to do these heinous acts that we would consider in our society today. Beginning in January um, 1940, the T4 program began to remove people selected for euthanasia from their home institutions. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, people selected for euthanasia um, began. So I got to read this again. Beginning in January uh, 1940, the T4 program began to remove people selected for euthanasia from their homes, institution, um, these institutions were to gassing, um, and from their homes to institutions to gassing facilities to die. In an eerie for, uh, foreshadow of the Jews and other societal outcasts would be murdered, the, um, in an eerie foreshadow of how Jews and other societal outcasts would be murdered, the disabled or um, unfit, you know, quote unquote, their words, unfit, were murdered in gas facilities disguised as showers. Okay, so if you don't know, um, there was a concentration camp. Most of the concentration camps were in Poland, which became like a um, annex, an, they annexed Poland and turned it in sort of this death camp purse. They also treated um, ethnic Poles very poorly. Um, and there's this particular, the most heinous one is Auschwitz-Birkenau, um, where when Jews and, and um, homosexuals, um, 
uh, Sintine Romi, which we know is, um, you know, you might know by the derived, these are the modern day terms for these people, were known as gypsies. And where the term gypsy comes from, from it's not a really appropriate term today, it's Sinti and Roma, that's the appropriate terms today. Um, they thought that these people came from Egypt, they were sort of wandering, you know, peoples that had sort of a different cultural connotation than the rest of mainstream society. And they thought they came from Egypt, in reality they came probably came from um, northern India, in these places like this. Also, the bodies were disposed of in crematoriums, similar to death camps, like Auschwitz, Birkenau. Um, relatives' remains were put in urns with um, falsified death certificates. They're not really falsified because the government was part of it, but I just say falsified in that um, the causes of death were um, falsified using documents from the Nazi uh, from Nazi Germany on the T4 program. It is estimated 70,000. Um, 273 people were killed between 1940 and 1941. The uh, euthanasia, quote unquote, like I said, because this is sort of is um, really controversial and differs way from what we would consider the euthanasia program, became a open secret. Protests, both private and public, became commonplace. Um, um, even Amongst the cler German clergy as well, there's a big um, protest area. In August of 1941, the program was um, halted by Hitler. Um, death continued, though, which is something I didn't even know as, a, as somebody who took a class on Nazi Germany and spent the whole semester pondering the um, atrocities carried out by um, carried out by um, you know, the SS and these elite groups within Nazi Germany, also the persecution within the governmental society, the Gestapo, um, and these types. Of, Gestapo was the police, in case you're wondering. So the, the difference is you had the SS, which were Hitler's private bodyguard, but they became sort of the elite killing squads for Hitler. And um, so not only were they like, you know, special troops that could, you know, um, especially trained in these types of things. They also had a, group, a division called the Einstadtsgruppen. And the Einstadtsgruppen went east and shot and killed as many of the... Um, um, in German, um, in Nazi... I shouldn't say German. I should say Nazi German and Nazi philosophy. Um, Hitler wrote about this in Mein Kampf. Um, Eastern Europeans were racial inferiors. So they were exterminated as the... They quickly followed behind the main advancing army... And these um, special SS units, Einsatzgruppen, murdered um, these undesirables and these types of things. And, you know, the, and here, see, I thought the death stopped here, you know, as far as um, on German citizens, um, of, you know, not of, of Jewish birth or Vicente and Romy groups or uh, um, what they called workshy people, um, might have been people who had disabilities as well. These types of things. Um, but I thought it stopped here. But in reality, the death continues. Yeah, um, yet the children program continued. Um, wider. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think about it. Under increasingly more secretive um, manner. It also continued in adults using more covert methods of lethal injection and uh, drug overdoses. Now, I'm not sure, but this might be the first case of lethal injection. Um, I could be wrong. The program uh, lasted till the end of World War II. The program, according to the United States Holocaust Museum, um, so I'm trying to think about what I wrote here. The program, according to the United States Holo uh, Holocaust Museum, exposed um, writing. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to think of the word that I used here. The program, according to the United States Holocaust Museum, um, you know, they targeted these groups. The United, according to the United States Holocaust Museum, these people were targeted. Geriatric patients, um, you know, they expanded this program. Sorry. So the, uh, the program, according to the United States Holocaust Museum, expanded, writing, quote, geriatric patients, 
uh, bombing victims and foreign forced laborers. The program um, claimed the lives of uh, 200,000 victims. In its conclusion of the uh, forced killings, the United States Holocaust Museum wrote, quote, the euthanasia program represented in many ways a rehearsal for Nazi Germany and subsequent, um, subsequent genocidal policies. The Nazi leadership extended the ideological justification conceived by medical uh, perpetrators for the destruction of unfit, quote-unquote, to other categories of perceived biological enemies, most notably to Jews and Roma and Sinti. Um, again, in quotation, gypsies, a, a, a term we need to try to stay away from. Um, um, you know, I know it's used, right, gypsy, um, but I think it's more appropriate that we use the word Roma and Sinti. These accurately describe these groups here. Uh, Gypsy doesn't really describe where these people came from in these types of things, that's why. The two programs, the uh, Final Solution and T4, were interconnected. Many of the people that worked on T4 also worked on the Final Solution. And if you know what the Final Solution is, there was a meeting. Um, there's actually a really interesting movie, uh, I think, that HBO did. I think it's called HBO. I think it was an HBO thing. Uh, maybe it wasn't, but it, I think it's called The Minutes. And essentially, um, it details this meeting. Um, let me see. This is this meeting where they, and there's only like one surviving copy of The Minutes. You know, The Minutes being the person who is the stenographer and takes down. Um, The, uh, the person who takes down the notes during the meeting, and this is where they were trying to solve what they called the quote-unquote, that the, was commonly brought up in Nazi Germany, the Jewish question, okay? And, uh, you know, they had these ghettos, and they were sort of trying to figure out what to do with them. They had these killing squads called the Einsatzgruppen. But, see, here's where it gets just insane, and you realize the level of calculatedness of these um, death camps that eventually became the final solution, you know, this, um, it, in, in its entirety, the final solution consisted of gassing, shooting, random acts, terror, disease, and starvation that accounted for the deaths of up to 6 million Jews. Um, the psychological, the Wanzi conference, this is what it was, it was a play, uh, Wanzi conference, it was a meeting between the SS, the elite guard of the Nazi state, and German government agencies, open, opens in Berlin. The discussion coordinated the implementation of the final solution, which is already underway at Wanzi. The SS estimated that the final solution w will in involve 11 million European Jews. Thank God they never got to 11 million, including those from non-occupied countries such as Ireland, Sweden, Turkey, and Great Britain. Between the fall of 1941 and the fall of 1940, the German railways transported millions of people to their deaths in occupied. So eventually... They developed these gassing methods that were used in the euthanasia program. And this is why the euthanasia program is so important for the understanding Nazi Germany is because this program helped carry out the final solution, quote-unquote. And the Wanzi conference says, gee, our troops are getting, um, you know, the uh, getting what is basically known as PTSD or, uh, you know, I, I don't know what the, what the exact word is. I'm trying to remember, but... Um, Yeah, and they, they use this, uh, you know, the biggest one being Auschwitz-Birkenau, which claims the lives of um, more than any other facility. Um, and basically why they developed, you started using cyclobene and gassings that they used, um, like from the um, uh, T4 program, is because the troops that were, you know, the Einsatzgruppen, um, you know, the shooting of having to shoot children or women and having these close contacts that was causing psychological damage. And this just lets you know that to the scale that these things were planned, that, oh, our soldiers are getting psychologically tra traumatized, so we should gas people. Now, it, it just lets you know how horrific these things were. Okay, so the second part and the biggest theme that we mentioned here 
is going to be in academia, okay? Because this is what our main character, Ms., uh, J Mr. Um, John Holder, is, is a big part of in the movie. So we talk about the book burning. So this is another theme in the movie. Another theme in the movie centers on the university and intellectual culture. Among this featured in the movie is the book burnings of Nazi Germany. In 1933, Nazi, German, uh, Nazi Germany policymakers aimed at making professional and cultural organizations in step with Nazi ideology. Joseph Goebbels, a man who achieved a PhD in German or equivalent of English literature, English studies or literature, was now the Nazi minister for public enlightenment and propaganda. The, the United States Holocaust Museum, describing the types of things the Nazi government would target, uh, wrote, the government purged cultural organizations of Jewish and other, uh, other officials alleged to be politically um, suspect or who performed or created artworks which Nazi ideology labeled degenerate. Among the early supporters of the Nazi movement were German university students in the 1920s. I want you to keep that in mind. The 1920s was the very heart of the German movement. These were the core fanatics who were there in the beginning. If you see anyone there um, in the 1920s, these were the core leadership. This included people such as, um, you know, Goebbels. Um, Himmler, Himmler comes a little bit later, but Goebbels becomes one of the more central figures because he's there in the beginning. Um, they forced the, they formed, I'm sorry, they didn't force, they formed the National Socialist German, German Students Association. The United States Holocaust Museum labeled the, um, these students as ultra-nationalist, not just nationalist, but, you know, a belief in your country is good. They're talking about ultra-nationalist, um, the rejection of all things foreign, and anti-Semitic. On April 6, 1933, the Nazi German Student Association declared a nationwide, quote, action against the un-German spirit. They would do this by a literary purge, um, burning books. Local chapters of the organiza uh, organization would provide the press with um, releases and uh, crafted articles. They would also provide a list of un-German authors and works. They would um, then have Nazi, they, uh, they also have le Nazi leaders um, speak at public gatherings. The organization demanded that German universities should be uh, should be place of German nationalism. On May 10th, 1933, university students burned up to 25,000 volumes of un quote unquote un German books. In scripted rituals, the right wing students called for speakers, um, Nazi officials, professors, university rectors and university students, um, leaders to take part. In Berlin, 40,000 people gathered. In 34 university towns, the events were held. They were successful in this respect. This, um, the most, um, most of, have put a significant pressure. This must have put a significant pressure on academics and the material they taught. They risked a great, um, this rate they risked a great deal of teaching um, publicly shamed books and like i said um they gained a lot through these because they created a, you know they said we should teach german authors we should teach you know um that forgive a people pride and they were sort of plus you know people get caught up in a movement these weren't necessarily hardcore fanatics all of them of course the leadership in the core always is but you know the you know they, they wanted to be wrapped up in something uh, there wasn't a lot of great things going on in, at this time in Germany okay with these um, themes explored we begin with the um, the movie good starring Viggo Mortensen and Jason Isaacs um, good the central character is John Holder who is a professor in the movie played by Viggo Mortensen the movie ha um, takes place in Germany just prior to World War II the opening um, Begins in Berlin, April 1937. Uh, John Holder looks to be entering an official building of sorts. Um, he is summoned by a committee 
a Nazi entity for an unknown purpose. Hold reveals he has been summoned to the Chancellery of the Fuhrer. The man Holder meets says he is the chairman of the party's censorship committee and says it is the job it is his job to be vigilant to keep a vigilant eye on modern literature. Of course, um, John Holder, a uh, professor of modern literature, to make um, to make sure it is um, in the in in line, sorry, in line with the National Socialism, a.k.a. Nazis. Holder was summoned to clarify views on a matter of concern to the Fuhrer. Holder has written a novel that the chairman says raises questions on the right to life, quote-unquote. He, um, he states that the views in the novel are revolutionary. A foreshadowing of the story this um, scene is and then the the movie um, goes back to May 1933 the movie then uh, flashes back in time to May 1933 John's father-in-law warns him changes coming and promotions will automatically go to the party members the uh, he warns uh, him that he could be out of a job um, commenting on his lack of party affiliation. So we're seeing a tide of turning here in May of 1933. Academic, uh, academics are, um, you know, being slowly pushed, okay? It, it has a starting point and an end point. Now, never, nothing was very uh, just overnight, you know, radical changes. None of these were things that were happening slowly but surely inside Nazi Germany. And... Now we realize that John Holder's um, lack of party affiliation may hurt him. You know, the next scene opens with what appears to be an empty classroom with few students and Doctor Holder teaching. Um, perhaps because this is a you know some of the, the material that John Holder is teaching does not comply with the changing tide that is going on in Germany. This is you know something that, that can be made, and this movie really is about the culture. It's not about you know Nazis running around killing people and these types of things. It is really about the German people in this movie and the things that are coming to pass within German society. Um, and the, sorry, Nazi Germany society. Uh, let's see here, right? Then uh, so doc, you know. Uh, the next scene opens with what appears to be a empty classroom, a few students and Dr. Holder teaching. There is a um, commotion outside that draws the students to the windows. Outside the window are people um, throwing books into a massive pile. Um, throwing books into a massive pile of books, right? So books on books to... As we have already noted, May 1933 was a time of the book burnings inside Berlin. John comments to another professor that they should go to the director about um, these said demonstrations outside. The other professor says he doesn't think that is a good idea. The a conversation indicates themes, uh, times are changing, as we have noted, inside Germany. The other professor is also the head of the department of this English um, and, and, you know, literature, um, I, I guess German literature in their case, or European literature. He receives that, uh, he, he reveals that certain authors are off limits, that he can no longer t um, teach a certain author, certain French author. The department head says that if Dr. Holder doesn't comply, he would be forced to dismiss him. Now we see what happens here is the book burnings if we were seeing one going on outside, um, you know, May 1933, it, it, this in, in the film coincides with the May 1933 book burnings of May 10th in particular. And what we're seeing here is this actually puts the, because the students are so overwhelmingly na um, inside the Nash, um, Nazi movement, this puts pressure on the teachers and what the type of materials they can teach. Um, certainly a very frightening experience. For um, Holder, the Nazi reach is um, beginning to work its way into academics, right? 
we mentioned that. Um, a novel. John Holder is writing a novel at this time. He says the uh, it's about a man who kills his wife because she is incredibly, incurably, sorry, incurably ill. Holder is at best um, is at least in his novel in favor of euthanasia, as Miriam Webster states. Quote, the act, this is um, what euthanasia is, the act of uh, or practice of killing someone who is very sick or injured in order to prevent um, any more suffering. Now, this is a debatable issue in, in, in American society today, right? We'll see where this goes. We're not trying to, I don't want to put anything in your head yet. And I said, like, again, if you watch the moving it will make this part a little bit more understandable for you because I'll be discussing things that you've already watched or things that you have noted. Okay, so in what um, I want to define this because it is a common theme of the um, movie and historically speaking, um, I think it's Morris. I want to—is it Maurice or Morris? Let's see. Morris. Maurice. I think it's Maurice. But anyway, next we um, are introduced to Halder's friend Maurice. Um, Maurice is um, played by Jason Isaacs. Um, Maurice makes um, reference to Hitler's uh, Hitler taking power. Maurice is a, a psychologist. Um, he is deeply um, concerned about Hitler. To which John tells him Hitler will never last. Again, we flash back to the 1937 conversation. The movie then goes back to the meeting with the chairman in 1937. The chairman says the Fuhrer has received letters from relatives of quote unquote unfortunates with incurable handicaps who are asking permission to ease their suffering. He says they need a paper arguing along the same lines of a Holder's book, right? Because in 33, he's writing it. 37, we flash back to the office scene here in the Chancellery. Um, right, he, he says they need a paper arguing al along the same lines of his book about, uh, about a, uh, what his book is about, a case for mercy death on the grounds of humanity okay so it's human um now what this may be alluding to at least um um holder's involvement holder seems to be someone who has a less extreme view of nazi germany right and they're simply saying we want to help people who are suffering to be able to end their lives, or the relatives that are, at, you know, they're writing the fear, asking them permission to be able to help ease their suffering. So that's what this is about here. Um, Dr. Um, Holder reveals his mother has been afflicted with t tuberculosis. The chairman says that Holder's um, participation guarantees humanity will be at its core. In... Um, Okay, the chairman also mentions Holder's frontline experience in 1918, World War I. The chairman says that everything was in order except that he never joined the party. Okay, so this is a key here. And, uh, you know, Holder sort of gets defensive and makes, you know, these types of things. But we're noticing a shift in how the party becomes central to surviving in Nazi Germany. It is no longer... Um, you know, something you just do because you want to be part of the party, right? It's, hey, if you want to get ahead, you have to join the party. Um, you know, you'll be passed for promotion if you're not a member of the party. Again, the movie, um, so we see this, a shift of forcing people into the party to incorporate them into the doctrine. Again, we move back to 1933. The movie um, jumps back to 1933. John confides in his wife that maybe uh, he should join the party. Um, this is 1933 again, so give the context here is different. John's wife, Helen, says he should have faith in himself as, 
as he always does the right thing. And this continually comes up again and again and again. The movie's called Good. Now, uh, what the, you know, I, I don't exactly agree with the person who wrote the original play um, that, you know, thing, I sort of thought about this and I sort of realized where I disagree with the person who wrote the play, which became this movie. And that is that, um, you know, people can get kind of, um, there's all these good people at the court um, that end up doing these things. And I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think that a lot of this stuff is blurred, but, you know, um, I don't know. Maybe that's just something I disagree with. While John confronts a student, uh, his student Anne, about him d uh, doing things against his marriage with her, John notices a gathering of uh, people. It appears to be a rally. Um, John has apprehensions about the rally and the movement in general about Nazism. But Anne says all it, is, it needs is a few good people to, um, again, going back to this thing of good and right, to channel it in the right direction. And then we're back to 1937 in the office scene with the, the, the committee chairman. While trying to explain why he has not joined the party, the chairman gets on the phone and says that perhaps Halder is right and that his talents will be wasted in the rank and file. He also states his name is uh, on the phone, Buller. Now, why does that name sound so familiar to you? Well, the T4 program of quote unquote euthanasia. Okay. Um, he was the, let's see here. I want to get this right. So I want to get back to where we're talking about this here. And this is the book burnings. I'm sorry, we're trying to get to the right area. Okay, um, we're still too far forward. Again, this name Bowler sounds familiar because Bowler was the Fuhrer Chancellery Director, Philip Borough Bowler, and Carl Branded were in the leadership of these quote unquote euthanasia programs. So we see that while Holder is, you know, sort of sold on um, the humanity of this. Um, the, this also coincides with, um, you know, this is right before the euthanasia program, I believe is 39 and that's where it actually really kicks in. Um, but here is what we can sort of relate this to here is while they're trying to get him to write this paper about, you know, the humanity of ending suffering of people that, um, you know, are really suffering or very ill, they're actually going to carry out things against people who are mentally handic handicapped, physically handicapped and all this stuff. But they actually begin a propaganda campaign to convince people that, um, you know, it's the right thing to do. Okay? So he, you know, this is Chairman Fuller. This is the guy who carries out the euthanasia program inside Nazi Germany. He's in the film. Now, if you're not paying attention, you're not going to get it. Why? Because it's, oh, his name is only brought up once on the phone. I didn't even get it the first time I watched this movie. And I, um, the second time... I got it. I was like, whoa, this guy's like the guy that carried out the euthanasia program. And once again, in Holder's novel, you know, he writes this novel about this person who kills the person because they're suffering so much. And they use like legitimate people to, to try to um, convince the public otherwise, uh, you know, uh, to, to their views. Um, they sort of really slowly prod people into directions. Um, Dr. Holder is introduced to a man who begins to explain the SS and how they are recruiting the specialist in their field. Holder is um, offered an honorary pa um, position in the SS. Now what's important here, okay, I want you to think about this. 
here um, he's offered this honor where, you know, you don't have to do anything, these types of things. This guy, I believe his name is Freddy. He eventually becomes a friend of Halder's in the movie. I'll explain this later. Now, we, I think we'll just shoot through the whole episode here and we'll just go power through the movie rather than try to break it up into two um, episodes, even though we probably could. Maybe, we'll see. Maybe we'll cut this off a little short and we'll try to finish up the rest of it later. You know what? I don't really want to, though, because I want people to really experience this all in one sitting. Um, you know, so he's offered this honorary position. Freddie sort of explains it as, you know, you don't have to do anything. We just give you an honorary position. And, you know, Holder's just, you know, he's asked to write this paper. So he's little steps here. Um, more, uh, in 1937, we're back to Maurice. Wanted to go out for a um, drink. Because he has a lot of um, cancellations. Um, Freddie, uh, John's SS contact, announces at some ball or ceremony that John is working a, uh, working on a paper for the Chancellor of the Fear. Again, the Chancellor of the Ch Chancellor of the Fear is the people that carry out the euthanasia program which is actually a real killing program against disabled people, mentally handicapped, um, even, like we say, expanding on t children who are disabled and these types of things. Um, now, we have to put ourselves in Holder's mind. Holder sort of represents the, the German people and how they're able to, um, you know, sort of, going along with these types of things and I think that's why it's important because we're not exploring you know planes shooting things up and bombs and uh, this isn't a holocaust movie per se either because it doesn't focus particularly narrowly on the holocaust but more the German people who are the ones who are sort of there in German society so you know uh, you know he mentions he's writing this paper for the Chancellor of the Fear now we have to like I said get in the mind of John Holder He's just being asked to write this paper, right? And nothing else. That's it. And it's a paper on, you know, what he considers a legitimate view. Um, and we also notice at this time that Holder's marriage is beginning to fall apart. This, um, the affair with Anne has taken its toll. His mother seems to be in worse shape, too. He is helping um, her move back into her house. Dr. Holder tells M M M Maurice he got a promotion to teach uh, to head of the department. It is revealed John joined the party. This um, causes a, f a fight with M M Maurice. Maurice says he doesn't get to vote anymore, that he isn't a citizen, and that legally he isn't um, even a, a full human being. John um, tells Maurice um, he should go abroad till things settle down, quote-unquote. Um, adding Maurice has no ties here. M Maurice, taking offense, says he was born here, that he fought for this country, and that he is a German as German as John, um, saying that leaving is exactly what they want him to do. Now, we want to explain this context, too. This is a, a, a very good trend for, uh, that's in German society at the time. And this, is, um, this scene is important to the historical connotations. While the film does not refrain, uh, reference it directly till later, Maurice is Jewish. There are a few things contained in this scene. One, the level to which German Jews were integrated into German society. They considered themselves German and felt German. This is in direct contrast to Eastern Europe, where Jews still lived in um, shetels or villages and apart from the society um, because of the stigma or, or because of um, you know, historical persecution or laws and these types of things. The example of uh, Maurice saying he fought for the country is important. The fighting he is referring to is World War One. As the United States Holocaust Museum wrote, German Jews had served in the German armed forces loyally, bravely, and out of proportion to their numbers in the population. So 
They may be probably made about less than 1% of the German population. They um, exceeded that in the army, as far as the population of the army. In many ways, the film is pointing out the hypocrisy of a Nazi ideology of what a German is. Here is a whole group of people that advanced um, German society and fought for their country, um, and now they're seen as enemies. John is unwilling to acknowledge the wrong things because it is good for him and he thinks he can change it. So his thing is obsessed with changing from the inside and guiding these people. He's the intellectual. He can guide these people, right? And um, this this might have been some re reasons why people got involved. Again, this is sort of the, you know, German society. Well, it's not that bad, you know. They can't be really that bad what they're doing, these types of things, right? And this is early Germany, 1937. In 1938, John Halder's book became uh, becomes a film. Things are looking up for him. The Reich minister can, uh, congratulated John on his success. John now goes to see Mo uh, Maurice. Things are going bad for his friend. Maurice asked John for exit papers. John still thinks things will be all right for Maurice. He is unable to become... Uh, he is un I guess he's... Uh, He's able to get these passes for Maurice because there's SS officers and he quickly um, changes course and instead goes to see his mother in Brandenburg to, um, you know, get the heat off of him. Um, he finds his mother ill, um, ill taken, ill taken care of is the word, sorry. The power is off in the house. John's mother then tries to commit suicide. He returns and again tells Maurice he couldn't get the pay it pass. John says Maurice will be fine because he is a war veteran. Um, in the early days, I think of when Hindenburg um, was president. Maybe this is 38. I can't. I honestly don't remember when they took power. Um, I feel like it might have been 33. Let me just type in president... And this is also a nice theme, Paul von Hunt, B Paul von Hindenburg. He was the president. He was sort of a center right. He wasn't as far right as, as um, Hitler. But when Hitler, when he died, Hitler took um, power and centralized even more power. Um, when did he die? I'm trying to figure that out. So he died in '34. So in '33, he wasn't really in power. Um, you know, and he, he, um, while he allowed, um, there's like some people that burned down some uh, building or something. And so while he allowed, um, you know, persecution of certain Jews, he did not allow persecution of war veterans, um, but now things are changing, and Maurice says it, it will uh, not help him anymore, that he's a war veteran. Um, mother's death. John and, he, and uh, Helen are at the funeral of his mother. You know, Helen now is his ex-wife. John asks why he left, um, with why he let her suffer, to which Helen, John's ex-wife, um reiterates because it is much too much to ask of a son in reference to ending her suffering or this euthanasia type thing he's going, writing about and thinking about. John um, tours the hospital. Now John is, uh, you know, having a, um, is touring a hospital. The doctor mentions he has read John's paper, you know, about euthanasia, to which John asks what he thought of it. Um, the doctor says it is a um, competent grasp with the issues, the paper being of the course of euthanasia. It is revealed that John's posi um, position is consultant in humanity. So they give him these names that actually mean the opposite of what's actually going on. Now, what, you know, the propaganda here, you know, how people, you know, John sort of gets on on this innocent level about euthanasia you know, which is a debate we can all have. Um, 
but he swims the game beginning more entwined, and this is the scene that really tells us things are going on that he probably doesn't agree with. Um, the doctor will give him the tour, ask what sort of life is this, in reference to the um, clearly mentally disabled people in the hospital room. Now, what we're seeing here is, it's alluded to, it's not stated in the film, so you really have to know the history of the scene, and that's why I think it's, you know, I even didn't notice all this stuff that I was just grappling with the themes of, you know, humanity in an unhuman human world, how a person, a person who is otherwise responsible and good and moral can end up on these courses here. Um, there's a scene, you know, the hospital room with these sort of mental ha mentally handicapped people, is sort of alluding to um, not euthanasia to end somebody who's meant or severely ill and dying, suffering, right? Um, you know, I guess I'm trying to think about mercy killing, I guess is what the guy and the, the minister, you know, um, um, Philip, Philip uh, Buller, you know, the guy who is actually killing people, basically, and uses Paul as a tool. I'm sorry, John as a tool, right, to get things done. So it's alluded to, it's not clearly stated, but we notice that there's a turn in the things that John's paper is perhaps um, actually carrying out. Now there's a house visit scene. Freddy reveals that he can't have children to John. This is, you know, he's having dinner with Freddy and his wife and John and his wife. Freddy's required to report to headquarters. Freddy reveals he has to go to headquarters. Says some Jews shot um, Von Roth, a German embassy official. What Freddy is referring to is the coming of Kristallnacht, which occurred between November um, 1940, I'm sorry, November 9th and 10th of 1938. Synagogues were burned down, Jewish owned businesses ransacked, Jews were also detained or taken prisoner, and these types of things. John Holder tries to save Maurice. John goes to the um, rail station and is able to get a ticket for Maurice. Vom Rath died and all um, reserves are mobilized. John must report for duty. Now, this seems to be a sort of turning point where he, people are actually asking John to, to, to do things now, right? And I apologize, this might be an episode that goes over in an hour. I, I try to keep them less than an hour, but I think this is an important um, issue. This is an important movie because it, it's one of the few films that actually takes you on the journey of the civilian life of Germany in an English language. Okay? Um, so he gets in the past, Von Roth dies, and all reserves are mobilized. This is when Kristallnacht um, starts. John must report for duty. So the first time he's actually really asked to do something, John witnesses the horrors of, of Jews being arrested. Um, April 1942, John Holder is now being asked to um, go to resettlement facilities in the east to make sure things are getting uh, going smoothly. While in the office, John uh, attempts to find out what happened to Maurice. He uses the records to check for him. He finds out that he's been, quote-unquote, evacuated. John Holder finds out that, and now his wife, um, turned in um, Maurice. He now heads east to the um, resettlement, quote-unquote, resettlement facilities. He is there to inspect facilities. John tries to use the visit to identify Maurice. In disbelief, Holder uses um, sees trouble, troubling images. He is witnessing the final solution. Dr. Holder, once removed from the heart of the Nazi party, is now at his core. The people carrying out the most atrocious um, things. And what... There's a few things, the themes that we explored. We talked about the T4 program in which... John Holder or the German people or sort of, you know, these are sort of trying to be justified to the people. And we notice the connection between the, um, you know, the um, killing of disabled people. And eventually we see at the end of the movie that John Holder ends up in a Nazi concentration camp where death is being carried out in another facet. Now what is interesting here too is John Holder never really recognizes that his paper is being used for the euthanasia 
not euthanasia. I think that's a misword. The killing of disabled people. I don't think he really realizes it in the movie. But when he gets to the from the T4 program, the things that he's working on to justify, again, the propaganda was being put out there, and these, you know, they were trying to convince people that these were good things. The film is sort of another piece of propaganda. When the film gets made, you know, based on uh, John Holder's novel, um, we're seeing another facet of trying to get the public to support these things. Now, the public doesn't support it. You know, these there's euphemisms for, um, um, I forget what they call them, transport facilities or you know um, evacuation centers and things like that but when he gets there he's at the core of the Nazi party now and you know what he's actually worked on both programs um, inadvertently he was working for the T4 program and the Reich Ch Chancellor the man who was responsible for the killings of disabled people the at its core and then he is thrown into the concentration camp in the final solution as a real, you know, active SS officer. So when he gets called up, he's an active SS officer. He's at the core of the Nazi party now. And this is something that is shocking, and I think the film is one of the most powerful movies. It is one of my favorite movies because it shows you the society and how little subtle things are happening around them. And John is in it too deep to really, um, you know... Maybe they weren't asking that much of people in Nazi Germany. They were asking just these little things, and they would manipulate these little people to do little things, you know, um, to do their to do these things. And um, John is never really a core party member till the end of the movie. Okay, he's making these little steps, these little transformations. He doesn't know about the T4 program, from what I can tell in the movie, or the killing of children. He is confronted with this weird scene that seems to him like it doesn't affect him, so maybe he doesn't get it. I got it as it's alluding to the killing of disabled people, that hospital bed scene right there. Um, I'm not sure if he gets it or not. I'm really, I'm really torn as whether or not he gets it. The doctor sort of alludes to it. What kind of life is this, right? You know, he's still pegging as a, um, as a. Uh, life, you know, uh, unworthy life, you know, sort of this meaning too. And I'm trying to remember, you know, I think it was, you know, these were doctors who were involved in the T4 program were doctors of standing, people that were, out, you know, outstanding physicians, people with reputations. How do they get these people involved? Well, they probably probably sold it the way they sold it to John Holder about humanity in the uh, and euthanate quote unquote euthanasia program. You know, being, helping people that are suffering. You know, telling them about the letters that that, that, that the fear is getting. Um, and in the end of the movie, John Holder is at the core of the Nazi Party. He's part of the not, a final solution. This may allude to how the T4 program and the euthanasia program, you know, start off targeting you know sort of disabled people, and they're selling it as, oh, you know, these people are suffering, and we need to end their suffering, and then eventually going, uh, you know, things that people. Um, you know that are uh, happen, and then going to a grander scale of the Holocaust. Because remember, the T4 program and the Holocaust are interlinked because of the gassing showers and all these types of things, the lethal injection, and these things. And then we get to, you know, there's a direct connection. Holder is a part of all these programs that seem to be interconnected. Like I said, many of the people that worked on the T4 program went on to. Um, who went on to the concentration camps to work in the concentration camps. And this sort of is reflected in John Holder being at the concentration camp at the end. When, at the end of the movie, he's overwhelmed with a century of what the horrors of what he's actually doing. And I think that's important for the movie and for the podcast and for the, um, the movie and both historically speaking. I want to give that connotation because, frankly, I missed a lot of the stuff that we're talking about when I first watched this movie because I didn't do the research and I just sort of, you know, thought about some of the things, the book burnings and how they, you were able to pressure academics into um, teaching the way they wanted to and teaching the subject matters they wanted to. Here's the approved list of what you can teach, okay? Um, join the party because you'll get promoted, right? So these people aren't fighting them anymore. They're, they're sort of moving slowly into, you know, um, things. And they slowly integrated all the youth 
um, groups and all these types of things into the Nazi party and the Nazi youth. And so they and create a doctrine and a culture of Nazism. It's very subtle changes here. Um, Hitler actually stops Kristallnacht because, you know, there's, there's all this violence around and people are overwhelmed by it. And he realizes it's gone too far. And he actually, part in the Night of Long Knives, as it's known, he purges his own party. You know, sort of getting rid of the fanatical fanaticals so that, you know, things become sort of more subtle. And it's interesting here. For a man is so radical how he had to rein in these people so that he could continue his ideology and his thing. It's the same here with John Holder. John Holder is slowly led on, like probably many of the German people that were involved in the smaller scale or on the outside, and somehow end up doing it to the center of these things here. So anyway, this is James signing off and saying, good luck.